there was bear tracks right in front. And sometimes it's like make up with this ex girlfriend, and, and you get this over the next day. And you're like, I don't. Know. Uh, it's like things that like you should be, you should be like. This. It's you you're talking to, you know. Yeah. I haven't even reached my destination yet, and uh, this is what you get when you just turn off the, this is Lac des Arts, uh, which is just outside of Kananaskis, or Bow Valley Provincial Park, off of the Grand Canyon. I don't even know what this factory is, or the processing plant is. Probably wood related, there is like a giant biosphere in the back of it as well. Um, since I'm alone, I'm not going to go too off the beaten path here, even though in this particular spot I am. Because as you can see, there's plenty of people camping out and kind of doing their thing down on the other side off the highway. There are numerous spots to pull off and uh, the weather is very unique today because uh, we're getting like rain showers with rainbows in the valleys and a lot of distractions so the, most of the traffic is not moving fast. Why do I say I'm not going to go off the beaten path? Because this is wild country. And uh, unlike most coaster related videos, and unlike any of the videos that First Drop normally does, the element of danger is somewhat within control. It's not out here. It's not advised to go hiking on your own as well, I should say. So we don't endorse any activity like that. So we're gonna get back to our car because there was a be cautious for bears sign just at the entrance. Just joking. Say, like, oh, just, he said, be strong, go back in there, lay on your mat. I thought he was like a shot, like a coach. Like, go get him. Look at any reviews. Foolish me does not listen to the advice that's given to me by numerous people, which is to take the old highway one instead of the main one that I've been on that whole time. So that's fine. I'm in Canmore, just outside of it. And yeah, the views are getting stunning because these are the true mountains that I had envisioned. And also I'm underdressed. There's dog parks and it's very safe just off of the one here, uh, at least at the interchange that I am, just uh, outside of the city or the town. Um, Canmore, well known from, for people that know hockey, I guess, because that's how I know it. Um, also, uh, yeah, underdressed, as I was saying, because, uh, yeah, I am just in a sweatshirt, so I got to get my jacket on and uh, make sure that I, uh, you know, am suited up. I don't have hiking boots or anything like that here, uh, so I'm not going to be climbing any of these mountains, that's for sure. Dog parks are busy here. Lots of dogs, lots of trails, lots of hiking. This place is kind of incredible and I've only been in it for about a half an hour without all the stopping that I've done along the way. Right. So I compare it more to...
But when I left here, or Calgary two hours ago, it was a kind of balmy mid-October day. Not anymore. We're at a far different elevation and experience. All right, so here we are. Uh, this is a little bit recessed from the main area down there. Here I am thinking in the pandemic that uh, you would have a low crowd amount, but that is certainly not the case here. The parking lot in the top section is full. I'm parked in the bottom section. It's crazy packed, uh, despite tourism being a little bit slower. Uh, yeah, so, but for what you're seeing here, it is pretty majestic and unbelievable to actually behold and everything you pretty much imagine. Although it is really, unless you're going to go hike up the side of the mountains, which really there's tons of trails that go up to, uh, I forget the respective names, but there are tea houses actually located up there. Today's not the day for it anyway, because uh, yeah, it's obviously snowing and there's lots of people in their Klondike boots and I am not one of them. So yeah, going to say 15 minute experience for you unless you're having some uh, tea or dinner in one of the hotels a la the Chateau Fairmont, which is right behind us. And uh, yeah, you could stay in a room for there, or in there, for a thousand bucks if you want. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's not what I'm here to do today because I'm staying in Banff. So enjoy a little bit more of Lake Louise, and then I'll be on my way down the highway back to Banff. It's hard to get your shot here. There's plenty of actual spots around here to actually shoot. Um, in front of the hotel, not in front of the hotel. Um, I have to get my obligatory shot in front of this view. Um, hopefully well balanced. It's a crazy day as far as getting a good shot because uh, there's no sun on the end of the glacier. You can't even see it really. Um, but yeah, at least I was here. All right, we're gonna go back to the car. I'm already get a battery power because it's so cold out here. There's, as I said, lots of spots for you to view, but uh, yeah, that's a nice little shot of me at Lake Louise. All right, ciao. We're going to go back to the car.
sun is just breaking actually so we get a little bonus as what I actually wanted and you can see the glacier now and that classic view Words of the wise that I will need to come here again as there's so much to do. Maybe at a warmer time because uh, I am underdressed and freezing already. Um, early shot of winter for me in October. Not normal for this in back home in Toronto. A little altitude, maybe breathlessness. That's Lake Louise. See you in Banff. Now, for some reason, I have come up this crazy steep road that's not even paved hoping to find a ski lodge. There isn't even a ski lodge up here, oh my God! Don't even ask me what's happening. I don't even know. The, uh, there's supposed to be a ski resort up here, but the road is blocked off, as I've just seen. However, there is an incredible view of the mountains of Lake Louise from here that you can take in as well. Trapped in bear country. Hopefully I get back to Banff. I don't even know. It's just like, if you're traveling with me, I love to get off of route. And uh, I suppose I definitely am. However, I'm gonna take advantage of this free port And then I'll rejoin you God knows where. Bonuses, free parking, free port Uh-oh. Okay, port bathroom review coming. Not so great, but at least they have them. All right, there's trails everywhere. This is like a parking lot for more trails that go around the Lake Louise side, village side, uh, that I'm at right now. I'm gonna go back down to the highway and uh, continue the adventure. I might go in the opposite direction towards BC. May go to the state line, or state line, provincial line. Uh, that'll be for a couple weeks from now. Um, and then I'll, uh, yeah, rejoin you at whatever destination I end up at. Maybe, maybe. Also, so I just don't record it on the way down, I'm gonna say uh, I don't recommend the Spark as your vehicle choice. 
Uh, hopefully I do make it down this treacherous road because uh, yeah, getting up it was a little bit hairy, I would say. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the view you're seeing is not going to do it justice. That's a little bit better to give you an idea of how uh, rough the conditions are on this particular road. Yeah, same stuff all the way down. A lot of rocks. A lot of rocks, baby. Oh dear. Hopefully I make it down. As we go down this crazy road, So I just got out of the uh, visitor center behind me here for Lake Louise. I'll admit I felt a bit of a fugitive because uh, I came into the park not really knowing that, uh, you know, it's not got gates so you can bypass. Uh, yeah, I uh, basically was a bit of a fugitive because I didn't have my, my pass for the day when I went up to Lake Louise. And really it's kind of, there's just not, it's so vast that it's impossible for them to really police it well, but we're here to follow the rules. It was 11 bucks to park up there. It's only 10 bucks with vehicle uh, for my single pass. I would imagine it's probably about five bucks to 10 bucks per person. But I'll put that information up on this great little shot here for you to peruse, just so you know for sure. Because uh, yeah, once you're in Banff, you actually have to have a pass for the day if you're staying in the town overnight. Important information to know, only 10 bucks. And I'm taking the 1A on the way back to Banff which is apparently going to give us much more picturesque views than the Trans-Canada Highway, which is all fenced off for wildlife and that. So I might see some wildlife along the way. Um, but yeah, here we go. Back to Banff. Okay, despite this being a very vast country, I cannot find a free piece of space anywhere in this area. But a couple of observations about this rest stop that I found a little funny. How do you uh, update the offerings on your boards? Well, you stick a uh, nail and wood over it. You hammer over a piece of wood and that gets you your answer right there. That's a sign modification done the Rocky Mountain Way. Also, if you're gonna come down here and do the public washrooms, uh, I recommend not. They're tiny in there, and it was actually kind of like, reminded me of home downtown in Toronto in there. Not so great. Uh, other than that, you have a couple of offerings around here to eat, and I will say they're not really inexpensive as well as you'd expect from a Parks Canada or a offering in the middle of a national park that's one of the most famous in our country. Anyhow, now we're gonna go to the 1A and get back onto a lesser used portion of the highway uh, that has some very scenic spots to actually check out, which I'll give you an update on the map, which they were nice enough to show me uh, before I got my food. Okay, and to just provide some basis as to where we actually are gonna be going on this 1A trip, the Trans-Canada Highway 
as previously mentioned, has fencing on both sides to keep most of the wildlife away from the actual uh, highway itself, and there are natural bridges that cross over it. However, that was the way I came down here on the Trans-Canada. Now I'm going to go on the 1A. We are in the village of Lake Louise currently, and we're going to stop at a couple of spots. Morant's Curve, which is actually a campground, uh, but uh, the attendant that was talking to me said it was actually a really good spot to uh, check out the view. Storm Mountain, and then we're also going to go to Johnston Canyon. Three stops along the way before we hit the town of Banff. Somewhere around just before sunset, we might go up the gondola. We might not, depending on how crazy it is down there. I will admit that my cafe trailhood experience no one seemed to understand the rules as far as COVID. There's a lot of, uh, let's say, tourists here. And they, uh, a lot of them were poking me and asking if I was in line while I was waiting for my sandwich. It was quite an annoying experience. Oh my God, I can't keep people. It's almost like I'm a famous vlogger already, even though I'm not. Oh well, maybe one day. Here we go. Welcome to Morin's Curve. I've come off of the uh, path there because as soon as I got here, uh, all these people showed up. Literally, uh, it's doubled in size of crowd. Uh, and I'm trying to do my commentary for you. Uh, so now I'm standing on the highway. But uh, yeah, pretty brilliant actual vantage point. So if you have the chance to check stuff like this out, uh, yeah, definitely get down here because it's not as crazy busy as it was at Lake Louise, for example. And uh, yeah, you'll have a nice little view and vantage point of a rather spectacular part of Alberta.
So we are here now at Camp Castle, which is uh, the location of an internment camp that used to exist here. As far as I know, it's not actually here anymore. It doesn't seem to be. But there is a memorial here uh, for the 60-odd World War I-era soldiers that uh, actually were held here at one point. It's a very fascinating monument. I'll probably read up about it when I get out of here because I don't have much time. I want to get down to Banff itself by sundown and there's just so many different places to check out. That's what it but, is here, Banff, from what I'm now discovering, which is obvious, I guess, considering it's on the national uh, rail line of the country and would have made sense. All right, I'm on my way back, or at least I hope by sundown. We're here at Storm Mountain, which fittingly has a snowstorm just going, grazing the background. But it sounds like there's a train coming as well, so we'll get some cool action shots of this train coming now. Last on our tour here is Johnston Canyon, which as you can see by the parking lot behind me, that is full. Uh, this is a pretty popular spot, almost as much as Lake Louise, and I've never really heard of it before. I haven't, so it's a complete mystery. We'll see what we got here. It also has its own washroom facility, which if you uh, are desperate for, this is the spot to come to in order to get that relief. I'm pretty sure I'm hammering up this path. 
less than 500 meters to go. I've only been on it for about five minutes, I'd say. This reminds me of somewhere in China. A vlog that I still have not posted, which hopefully I'll get around to. And if by the time that you're watching this, hopefully is already up. Tianmen Mountain. I now I actually kind of remember this path, seeing it fleetingly, but never really found it in the research when I was doing this for BAMP. I'm not here super late. Everyone's always been saying the animals come out at, dawn, at dusk, but they never say what animals, which is kind of worrisome. Hopefully not the animals that uh, enjoy a meal in the uh, dusk time. I think we're close to the lower falls and I've caught up to some people that I did not even very slick rock so don't wear the footwear that I have on that I'm trying not to even show you. I just thought I was so Canadian that I did not even wear the appropriate footwear as true Canadians here. Although I say that and then I look and I see some people in pretty much the exact same thing I'm wearing. Well, I'm glad I came here. I'm not sure I've actually uh, devoted the right amount of time or camera actually for what I'm seeing because this reminds me of a vlog that will never be posted as it was so long ago that I was there, but Dadis Gorge in Morocco. It's a pretty wild path, to be honest. I'm impressed. I'd say this is, you know, I, I teased the one in China before, but this is actually better than that path for the overall experience and what you get to see. Is it's kind of stunning. I might capture a lot of the footage that I would, uh, normally offer on the way back as I take it all in for the first time. This is the lower falls here. And this would be quite a sight. And there's quite a crowd here as well. There's this particular viewing point that you can get at the end of this path just inside this cave, which I'm sure everybody is waiting for. And that they are. There was nobody in the uh, in that area behind me, so I might that particular viewing area. After I go to the upper falls, I'm doing it. Why wouldn't I? I'm here, right? Which they are not doing, so with that bared in mind and the lack of people 
behind us. Hopefully by the time I come back down, there will be no wait. You can see the pathway for the upper falls just in there. And away we go, some 800 meters to the top. This elevated walkway is a marvel. If you're just a fan of this kind of like structure or these types of paths, I'd have to say this is the best I've been on. They obviously have quite a beautiful terrain to work with here. But it's completely immersive, as you would say. And you always got to remember to turn around as the views are just as brilliant behind you as they are going forward. The falls, they are impressive. And I don't even think we've reached the actual top in the highlight, I guess. If it isn't even a highlight, it's just the highest point. Uh, we must be getting close, if that's not it. I hear more falls. We've dusted everyone behind us. There's like a wee falls in there. I hope this isn't what we've come for. Although, there is, uh, this is probably the most cardio that a lot of the Banff visitors from afar do while they're visiting. So, uh, on this particular section, they certainly look winded. We're continuing on. We're here, I believe. Uh-oh. I believe 530 meters to go. That would probably be it there. Just a short walk around this path and then we will arrive at the Upper Falls. Five hundred and thirty meters? Hmm. Now nah, that would be uh, like hundred and fifty meters. There's so many falls. We're already running. We're going to be out of juice by the time we get up there battery wise. Hopefully not. Well, I said I wasn't coming on a hike, or I didn't think I had planned for one when I was going to visit Banff. Boy, was I ever wrong, as here I am on quite a significant hike up this here closed-off mountain. Oh dear. Restricted activity. We are on the final ascent, the final 100 meters here, and they're gonna make it count. I feel sorry for the people I left behind me about 700 meters back, because I don't think they anticipate this final climb. <sighs> Nor did I. But I believe we're here on this path ahead.
some dudes taking their shirts off in front of Lake Louise and like in this uh, kind of like posing as if they're like hyper machismo. Uh, I'd like to see them go into the woods. I'd like to see you go up in there fam. Spend a night out there with your shirt not on. See where that takes you. Anyhow, back to some scenics. I have reached the summit, obviously, and yes, it was worth it. Uh, you know, uh, if you want to go another 3,000 meters up to the ink pots, uh, it's available for you. Anyhow, I'm going to go the 2,675 odd steps, or meters in total, really, down this slope back to the parking garage or parking area. What an ascent! Almost, uh, I'd say 1,500 meters really, probably around there to get up here, but totally worth it. Don't forget, we still have a small little, ling, little teaser at the falls below this to get to. So we're now just at the actual cabins here at the bottom of the canyon that you can stay at. Unfortunately, uh, I hope you enjoyed that last shot, uh, as much of it as I could capture for you before, unfortunately, the camera ran out. But to be honest with you, there's so much to look at and see here that it's worth actually just coming. And at the end of the day, there's so many people vlogging and also just capturing stuff with their cell phones that I'm sure that YouTube has more than enough footage to provide in that regard. That being said, the walk down is probably more impressive because uh, you, do, you do get like more of a perspective of the path and everything uh, in relation to how it weaves in and out of the river in the canyon. Uh, the perspectives, perspectives there were brilliant uh, and yeah that was really kind of great to see and behold. Well this is the end of the this portion of the Banff trip because I'm now headed back to Banff itself. Um, I'm gonna give a shout out to Parks and Rec there uh, for Banff because they definitely know their business. They gave me a perfect itinerary of these three spots to hit on the way back to the town. In addition to that, not only uh, did I enjoy the fact that I hit Lake Louise first because it kind of actually is nothing uh, near as impressive as say this particular uh, attraction. So ending your stay here or ending your like visit here is probably the best route to go through because it kind of builds up to what the finale is which is the canyon here. So yes great itinerary to hit those spots. I, I'm sure there's tons more to check out and uh, you know interact with in this area because uh, yeah like I said just getting to this spot there was tons of spots to pull off and check out and really under service compared to what Lake Louise was and also this location. So obviously this and Lake Louise are probably two of the bigger spots that get hit along the, uh, the 1A. So if you are here, definitely check out those smaller spots if you have the time. At the end of the day as well, perspective wise to get up to the top and down, it did take me an exact hour to get from the top to the bottom. I'm even surprised that it was that short. I thought it was going to be much longer. I'm not sure if that sign that we saw at the beginning there was referencing uh, the entire route or if it was just to get up is one hour and to get down is one hour. It kind of has to be because uh, yeah, I was trucking at a very fast pace as you can see for what we saw getting up there. Alright guys, 
if uh, my next destination, as I trail off, uh, it's overcast as we can see here, and I'm about to head into the town, it'll be dark in about an hour's time. This may actually be the last portion of the vlog for today. It may have a night portion as I check out maybe the nightlife in Banff, but I'm not expecting too much now. Even though it is a town of, I believe, a substantial size. Uh, and the main uh, service area for anyone that's visiting this park. And there's a lot, and there's a lot of people from all over the world right now too. Lots of scary pickup trucks that have some sort of weird agenda here. As that one just left and yeah, I've noticed a lot of black pickups. Have you ever seen Duel? Uh, some of the highway uh, experience on here has been much like that for me being followed by black pickups with tinted windows. That is the first drop experience. Speaking of Banff overall though, 10 bucks to do this park, or for admission to do stuff like this that cost you next to nothing, $10. Uh, Lake Louise cost 11 bucks uh, for the parking, but other than that, uh, shop around. You're not gonna find much of a better offer or value than that as, as far as you got this entire vast park with so many amazing natural uh, locations at your disposal to check out. Anyhow, I'm going to give the rangers a little bit more activity as I make my way back down to Banff and uh, maybe we'll see you there. If not, we'll see you tomorrow morning where I'll be covering the town before heading back to Calgary. But he wants to come along for the ride. Those are the, like the equivalent of seagulls or pigeons out here, but they're beautiful. I can't believe that there's nobody out on this highway. There's literally, no wonder I feel like I'm being followed because if there is only a black pickup that's always behind me, it makes sense because there's nobody out here. This is quite the vista point. I am going to take my time heading into Banff since uh, I can't do the Banff gondola today. It doesn't really make sense when the mountain looks as it does. Once you get up there, the visibility will be quite minimal. So we might try that again tomorrow. All right, buddy, I gotta go. I'm heading out of here.
I came out here to uh, get a shot of the mountains and stuff while it was still bright out. But as you can see, it literally has just changed. I just checked into my hotel and it's already changed weather within 10 minutes. Probably five minutes actually, it was a fast check-in. I'm gonna go down, do a quick loop, come back, probably get some dinner. If there's anything to show you, I will. Otherwise, maybe see you tomorrow. It is an early morning here in Banff. Uh, we have two things to check out before I leave town and take advantage of this sleepy Monday holiday day uh, as all the tourists now make their way back to where I'm making my way back to, probably Calgary. Uh, but I didn't check out the full town other than the shopping district last night. So we're gonna have a look at that uh, big old hotel that they got here as well as ghost town before heading back into the city. All right, this is the conclusion of the Banff adventure. Somewhat uh, uh, less exciting than yesterday's portion, possibly, uh, we'll see. And as you no doubt have probably noticed, uh, it is cold in Banff this morning. It was actually minus one last night. I think we're still rolling with like 15 to 20 degree temperatures at home or I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, I apologize. But uh, cold is the outcome, cold. Banff transit system Next bus in nine minutes going to Canmore. Canmore being the main town just outside of here that's not actually part of the provincial park. Supposed to be seeing some massive hotel, but as you can see, I can't see anything because the tree cover is substantial. But it's supposed to be huge, and I can't see anything. You can see Banff Gondola, however, all the way at the top. Sadly, we'll not be able to go to Banff Gondola today as it opens at 11 and I must get back to town. And as briefly touched on yesterday, uh, it was just too overcast and there wouldn't have been a great view up there if I had made it in time. It is open till 9 p.m. every day, but uh, 11 to 9 every day, but yeah, if there's clouds up there, not really a point. Anyhow. I should be seeing a hotel in a second. Still don't see anything, however. I think we've found it. 
If you don't know the history behind these majestic hotels that are built pretty much in every capital city in our country, which includes the Chateau at Lake Louise, and also this uh, majestic hotel that we're about to approach here, Banff Springs. All right, so here it is, the view that everybody comes for. This is the Bow Valley Terrace. It's for guests only, but it's open, so I'm here. Uh, there's a pool down here, which I'm not gonna show you, but the view is really remarkable. In fact, there's many terraces that overlook the main valley area, which will go to over here. The pool is steaming as well, which is creating a quite a dramatic effect for you to enjoy. It would cost you about uh, twice as much as it costs to stay in town to stay at this particular location. However, considering how majestic it is, I definitely would consider it. I'm actually surprised by how big it is. It's massive. So I'm gonna to try to go to the other side of the hotel and then I will uh, get back out because I do have to get out of here at some point. It's really hard to leave though because it's just so brilliant to take all in. And it was the Canadian Pacific Railroad that is responsible for this place. I'm actually really impressed by how immense this hotel is. Uh, I've done a full walk around to get to this other side where the sun is hitting it and you get that iconic view. Although really to get the proper iconic view of it, you have to be on the other side of the Bow Valley shooting back at the hotel. I'm sure if I went all the way down to the golf course, I might be able to get that view. But for now, this will have to do. There it is, as you can see. There is a trail actually. And this will lead me back as far as I know to town. The alternate way. There's still one hopes. I'm not so sure I'm gonna find the ghost town, but this might be a perfect spot to end our tour as we've now reached the Bow River. And at the end of the Bow River, well, it's not the end, it's anywhere but the end. We're at Bow Falls. The beautiful Bow Valley and some falls. A 
hazardous recreation trail. That's exactly what we want. I'll be the judge of the hazards. Actually, I won't be. I have no experience with bears. Or cougars. Cougars! More frightening than bears. There's no question that I gotta cross this river in order to get back into town. So we'll follow it, right? There are, you can look at the other side there. There are people observing as well. You can climb up to that side. Okay, we're on course for a one kilometer walk back downtown, which is perfect. Had I known you could come this way, silly me, I would have come this way first. Not sure how to get to the other side. I would imagine maybe a suspension bridge, but who knows. The falls just continue, they keep going all the way down. Quite impressive. I have found my bridge. I'm crossing over. It's quite the view. I'm gonna have to take a picture of this. Okay, well, there may be a ghost town on the other side of this bridge. There may not be. There was advertised as one, but we shall see. Either way, not a disappointing bridge to say the least. These people have taken you can tell it's cold because I'm running over my words, but you can see how fresh that water is. Being holed up in a major city my whole life, it is noticeably clean, the air, and you can see the water is obviously just as much so, so yeah, very refreshing. Okay guys, well, I can't find the ghost town, so for those of you that might know better than me, feel free to uh, comment on where exactly that might be in relation to where I started here, because Google Maps it was supposed to be in this area. Anyhow, I'm going to get breakfast, and this is the end of the Banff adventure, regretfully. Um, thank you for joining me, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Get here definitely before this time because it will be much colder. Although if you're here to ski, that's obviously a separate whole vlog for another time and another visit. All right guys, thanks for watching. Always enjoy.